The Raspberry Pi is a small, single-board computer built by the Raspberry Pi Foundation out of the UK. The Pi has become a fan favorite for developers in the makerspace doing embedded development. Now, in my previous tutorials, I had done many examples on how to do bare metal programming on the Raspberry Pi Pico, a sister board to the Raspberry Pi based off of the RP2040 ARM processor. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to do direct to register programming and ARM assembly on the Raspberry Pi to blink an LED on and off. Before we get started, I wanted to start off by thanking my Patreon supporters listed here. Also, to be kept up to date on more low level content, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and come hang out in our Discord. Now, to program our Pi on bare metal, we'll need a few things. First, we'll consult the datasheet for our Raspberry Pi's processor to identify where the GPIO, or General Purpose In and Out, bus lives. The GPIO bus is the interface we'll use to directly control pins on the processor to blink the LED. In direct to register programming, we write directly to physical addresses on the processor to make things physically happen. So here we see the physical address of the base of the GPIO interface. By writing directly to these addresses, we'll be controlling the output of the pins. When doing direct register programming, it's easiest to have the datasheet for the chip that you're programming at hand. The datasheet will have the addresses of various other features of the processor, details on how to use them, and other useful tidbits that may save you time. It is important to note here that while this is a specified address, due to memory mapping and other funky embedded considerations, the actual base address of the GPIO interface is this address here, OX3 f 20 0 now, now that we have all this information mapped out, what do we do with it? Well, we can go into our development environment and set up a project just like any of our other ARM assembly tutorials we've done before. First, we create a makefile that produces a flat binary image with our code in it. Here, we invoke the assembler to put our assembly together, the linker to link the assembly together, and then we call object copy to copy the flat binary information out of the ELF, and then we call it kernel7.image. Kernel7.image is the name the Raspberry Pi uses to boot the image into Flash when the Raspberry Pi turns on. It will read this image off of the SD card. And like usual, we set up our underscore global start to denote where the code begins. Making start a global exports it so that the linker knows how to construct the ELF file. Now moving on, we're going to define a few constants to keep our code simple. The first constant we'll be using is the base address of the GPIO interface. As mentioned before, the data sheet may be reporting this address, but it's actually going to be ox 3 f 20 Now, to access the rest of the GPIO structure in memory, we'll be referencing the rest of the structure as offsets into the base address. So, for example, we'll use numbers like 4, 8, etc., and add them to this base address to read or write into the rest of the structure later in memory. Here, we set our first constant to represent the base address of the structure, which, again, is a previously mentioned address from the datasheet. Next, we need to set our pin to GPIO mode. In this example, I'll be using pin 21, and that pin will be an output, so we'll need to make the pin set as an output in this GPIO structure. To do this, we'll need to put a value into fcell2, or function select2, which lives at offset 8 from the base address of our structure. Again, all this information on addresses and values comes directly from the datasheet. For our example, again, we'll be using pin 21, so to set pin 21 as an output, we need to set fcell2 bits 5 through 3 to 001 or 3. This translates to setting fcell2 to the value 8. Now that we've set the mode of the pin, we'll need to actually control it, i.e. turn the pin on and off. To do this, we'll use the GPIO set and GPIO clear addresses, which live at offset hex 1c and hex 28 from the base address of the structure, respectively. To use them to turn the pin on and off, we write the bit position of the pin number we want to control. So, because we want to control pin 21, we'll set bit position 21 onto either of those registers to control it. To do this, we'll write the following value, or 1 left shifted by 21 to GPIO set or clear when we want to control the pin. Now, we need to write some code. First, we need to load the base address of our structure into a register. Again, we'll be using this to reference off of to store values to control the pi. Next, we load up the value for GPIO 21 output to make pin 21 an output and store that value into the GPIO function select to register. For those of you that are new to ARM assembly, the syntax of that instruction is store the value in R1 to the address stored by R0 offset by some number. So that ends up turning into store into the GPIO base plus the offset 8, the value 8. 
After this line of code executes, pin 21 is set as an output pin on the Raspberry Pi. Next, we will set up a counter. This register will be used to hold a high value that the processor will count up to to create a delay. Now we create a loop. This loop will run forever to run our Blink program. Here, we load up the GPIO val to enable pin 21 and store it in the GPIO set register. Doing this turns on the LED. Now, the LED is turned on, we have to delay. The delay is done by clearing out a counter register and counting up to that high value stored in register 2. When they are the same, we continue. Here we can copy and paste the rest of the code and just modify the destination register to instead of setting the LED, we clear the LED and change the name of the label to reduce duplication. And then finally, we jump back to the top of the loop and start over again. This will run our code forever. So really quick, let's summarize the code we just wrote. Here we load the base address of the GPIO structure into R0. Here we set the pin as an output. Here we make our counter. Then inside of our loop, we turn on the LED by setting pin 21 to GPF set 0. Then we clear out a counter and we count up to our large number in R2 as a delay to keep the LED on. Then we do the exact same thing, but instead of writing the GPIO set, we put it in GPIO clear. Now, after fighting through a couple sets of compiler errors, uh, the assembler was not happy with where I put some commas and how I commented on my code, but after fighting through some of that, I'm able to get my code to compile by typing make. We are able to see that the program produces our kernel 7 image, and we can use that, put it onto our SD card, put it into our Raspberry Pi, and I'll show you guys how to set up the circuit so that you can see your code actually run. All right, guys, and as promised, here is my Raspberry Pi setup for the video. Um, the yellow cord there is on pin 21. The yellow cord comes out and goes to a resistor for the LED. The LED then goes out to another yellow cord, which is hooked up to a white cord that goes to the ground pin there. So the circuit is just pretty simple. Pin 21, resistor, LED, ground. And now we'll play the video. And on the SD card, I put that kernel 7 image and put it into the Raspberry Pi, plugged in the USB cord, and here we go. The LED is blinking and our code is running. Well guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope this video made it really apparent that direct to register programming is available on pretty much any platform that you have. And learning to do it is as simple as consulting the data sheet and figuring out where the different peripherals live in memory and figuring out what the appropriate convention is to write to them. Um, if you did enjoy this video and you learned something, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video, probably in the next week or so. so Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you guys later.